Man. Did you try to come down with that? No, nah, it was good, man. Love it. Let's go. Come back. Yeah, they're back to school. I'm on my way. Yeah. It was back to school. Yeah. Oh, I should close this door. It's loud. Well, let's All right, go. gentlemen. I'm going to close the back door, too. I, I'm, uh, today, we're going to talk about the tree of life. And as we're discussing the tree of life, it was brought to my attention. I usually ask one of the barbers. They usually ask me, uh, what you going over today? Mm -hmm. All right. And then when I tell them what I'm going over, they have a mind. They don't really know scripture. Right. But they give you some feedback that's useful. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, what is the tree of life? Is that in the Bible? Because the only tree that we really talk about is the tree that got mankind into trouble. Mm -hmm. okay. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Right. But there was another tree there. Right. So let's take a look at that in Genesis, the second chapter. So in Genesis, the second chapter, beginning at verse 9, it's going to say, you guys should be there by now, right? Okay. All right. It's going to say, the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eyes and good for food. In the middle of the garden. So we had a whole bunch of trees, but in the middle of the garden, mm -hmm. there were, uh, in the middle of the garden was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we discuss the tree of knowledge of good and evil but we never discussed that tree of life. Right. All right. So most people only talk about it because it got Adam kicked out of the garden, mm -hmm. banished from the garden. How you going, Anthony? Yeah, they got him banished from the garden. So today we will talk about the tree of life that restored Eden. When you get to Revelation, the 20th chapter, it's going to say Eden is restored. Mm -hmm. They're going to talk about a tree of life there. They're going to talk about a tree of life in Genesis. But after Adam disobeyed the Creator, he was banished from the Garden of Eden. And now, man knowing good and evil, if you look at verse 22, uh, chapter 3 and verse 22 right. is going to say, And the Lord said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also mm -hmm. from the tree of life and eat and live mm -hmm. forever. We don't have enough time to go into what it means forever mm -hmm. because sometimes in the book you're going to see forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Those are different times. We don't have time to go into that. But he must not be allowed to also eat from this tree of life and live forever. Now the man has become corrupt. Mm -hmm. He knows good and evil, wicked and righteousness, light and dark. The Ephesians say blown back and forth by every wind of teaching, mm -hmm. every wind of doctrine. Mm -hmm. uh, Double-minded is what James said. He's, the man is unstable. He's double-minded in everything that he does. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. trying to be good and evil, light and dark. Mm -hmm. But the scripture says, what do they have in common? What does the believer and unbeliever have in common? Mm -hmm. what, does the, what does wickedness and righteousness have in common? There is no fellowship. Mm -hmm. That's why brother said we, we, we try to fellowship with other people from other buildings because we are of the same body. Right. We should be able to fellowship if we believe the same thing. So now he's banished from the Garden of Eden. And if you look at verse uh, chapter 3 and verse 23, it's going to say, And the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden uh, to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east of the garden of Eden, cherubim, and a flashing sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Mm -hmm. She's guarding the way to the tree of life, because man cannot reach out his hand and eat from this tree 
in that condition. Correct. Okay? So now, when Jesus dies, I know I'm in Genesis, right. but let me do, let me correlate at the same time. When Jesus dies, there's going to be a curtain, which I'm going to describe in Exodus, mm -hmm. that's going to be torn from top to bottom. Right. And right. in this curtain, there's going to be a cherubim that's woven in the curtain and it's going to be destroyed. But in Genesis, this cherubim is guarding the way mm -hmm. back into the garden. Mm -hmm. When Jesus dies and gives up his spirit, he's going to destroy the cherubim. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, this is the reason why. You can sit there or you can sit right there or over there. How you doing? This is the reason why in the book of John 14 it's going to say that Jesus is the way, right. the truth, mm -hmm. and the life. Because he's opening up a new and living way mm -hmm. through his body that is the curse. Right. Let's take a look at that so, so, so you know I'm not just making it up. Go to uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter. We cover a lot of scripture in these Bible studies. I went to a uh, church service uh, yesterday and, and the man preached on one scripture. Mm. And I was wondering why he didn't touch more than that. Mm. One scripture. <laughs> Hebrew what? Uh, Hebrews 10 and 20. Uh, begin at verse 19. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open up for us through the curtain that is his body. So there is a cherubim mm -hmm. that's guarding the way back to the tree of life, and Jesus is going to destroy that barrier. Mm -hmm. So now, the tree of life is just like any other tree in the garden, made out of wood, well, created from wood. Mm -hmm. God is the creator, mm -hmm. and the tree is wood. Now Moses is going to be in, Moses in the book of Exodus the 12th chapter 12 and 22 Moses is going to instruct the elders they're getting ready to exodus or exit Egypt and so now Moses is going to instruct the elders to take the blood of the lamb and place it over the door frames of your homes mm -hmm. and the destroyer of death it's going to pass over your homes. Now you got the wood. They're going to place this blood on the wood. Mm -hmm. You got this cherubim who is guarding the way back to Eden. You got the, the uh, you got the Israelites that are in slavery and captivity, in bondage, mm -hmm. and they are going to go through the Red Sea and go to the wilderness which they are going to have what we call a resurrection of the mind. They're going to be baptized into Moses, mm -hmm. into the cloud, into the sea. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter uh, 10 mm -hmm. when they get to the wilderness they're going to be free. Mm -hmm. Free from slavery. Mm -hmm. Free from captivity. But they need to get a new mind. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lord is going to cause them to hunger. Uh, 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 I'm still. Can you can can you read? Uh, uh, I'm going to Deuteronomy eight and three. Can you read? No, no. Can you read First Corinthians chapter ten one through four? Mm -hmm. This is uh, the only Christian standard version. But now I want you to know, brothers. That our fathers were whole under the cloud, all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in the sea. They yeah. all ate the same. They all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Now, Adam was not allowed to reach out his hand and eat, mm -hmm. but these Israelites. Are eating right. and drinking mm -hmm. from the same spiritual food mm -hmm. 
and it came from that spiritual rock. Correct. But they need a new mind. So that's why I went to Deuteronomy 8. 8 and, uh, Deuteronomy 8. It's going to read, uh, I'll read this a second. Uh, Deuteronomy 8, beginning at verse 2. Mm -hmm. And it's going to read, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness for these 40 years to humble you and test you in order that you will know in your heart whether or not you will keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, mm -hmm. to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out or comes from the mouth of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Mm -hmm. So in Exodus, and I, anybody got any questions so, so far? No? Okay. So in Exodus 26, when you read Exodus 26 and 25, the Lord is going to begin to show Moses how to build this tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Step by step. And it's going to be according to the pattern mm -hmm. shown to Moses in the mountain. Uh, it's Exodus 26. Now in Exodus 26, beginning at verse 1, it's going to read, uh, John, can you get um, Hebrews 8 and 5? Sure. Thank you. Now Exodus 26 is going to say, make the tabernacle with ten curtains of finely twisted linen and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn with cherubim woven into, into them by a skilled worker. Mm -hmm. There's that cherubim again. Guarding the way. Now, where is the way? So he's going to build the tabernacle, the outer court, the holy place, the holy of holies, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a curtain that's going to be between those two. And within that curtain, a skilled worker is going to engrave a cherub. Mm -hmm. And that's guarding the way. Because only the high priest is allowed to go behind that curtain to make atonement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 8 5. Yes. And this is uh, the New King James Version. Who served the company and shadow of the heavenly things as Moses was divinely instructed. And he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Shown to you. So Moses. Just like Noah, mm -hmm. he had to make it exactly the way that God yes. showed exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. cubit by cubit. Everything that the Creator told him to do, it had to be exactly the way He told him to do it, according to the ark, according to the tabernacle, mm -hmm. exactly. Because it was only a copy. The true one was in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to First Kings, first. Kings 6 and 23. Now Solomon is building the temple. Mm -hmm. Moses built the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. The tabernacle stayed in the tent. Right. Mo, uh, uh, David says, here I am in a house of cedar while the ark of God remains under a tent. Mm -hmm. David wanted to build a, te a temple for it, mm -hmm. but he says mm -hmm. you were not the one to build it for me. Right. Your son Solomon is going to build it. Mm -hmm. So now Solomon is building the temple. And when he builds this temple, 1 Kings 6, 1 Kings 6 and 23, mm -hmm. it's going to read, For the inner sanctuary he made a pair of cherubims out of olive wood each 10 cubits high. One wing of the first cherubim was five cubits long, 
and the other wing five cubits, 10 cubits from the wing tip to the uh, to wing tip. The second cherubim also measured 10 cubits, for the, tip, for the two cherubims were identical in shape and size. The height of each cherubim was 10 cubits. He placed the cherubim inside the innermost room of the temple with their wings spread out. The wing of one cherubim touched one wall while the wing of the other touched the other wall and their wings touched each other in the middle of the room, he overlaid the cherubim in gold. Mm. You ever read that? Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you got the cherubim, mm -hmm. you got the wood, mm -hmm. you got the blood, and you got all of the Israelites eating and drinking from a spiritual rock. Mm. Let me take you back to the, your hand went up. Oh, okay, put your hand on that. Let me take you back to Abraham. Well, mine is criminal. Go ahead. So, uh, in all of this, what we're seeing is uh, repetitious um, instruction given to various leaders of the, of the House of Israel at, at various times as you're going from Old Testament to New Testament back. Mm -hmm. But what I'm seeing is the key point here, and one of them perhaps, is, is that, that that way, that that process mm -hmm. uh, became irrelevant once the true sacrificial lamb had been brought into to, to existence, that being Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, as he was crucified, then the veil of the temple was torn mm -hmm. uh, that way back to the Old Testament of, of finding uh, the tree of life or that, that living uh, area that, that God was guarding folks are going into without being uh, uh, a priest, for instance. Mm -hmm. It was only they could go in there and make atonement for the people of Israel. It was no longer necessary mm -hmm. at the point of Christ uh, coming, dying, and sacrificing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is that where you're, where you're going? I just don't want to lose that, that very point. No. Okay. But everything you said was right. Mm -hmm. uh, there was the, uh, after the sacrifice of Christ, there need no more need. For, there's no need for sacrifice any longer, and there's no need for the actual tabernacle, right. because in Hebrews nine it says, "While everything was arranged like this, the Holy Spirit was showing while the first tabernacle was still fully functioning, right. the new and living way hadn't been disclosed yet. Right. So now, when Christ comes, now the new and living way has been disclosed, right. and Paul is saying that." Every last one of us now have access to the Father. We don't need we don't need the priests to stand in front of us right. to do to conduct any ceremonies for us. We now all have access because his sacrifice is going to fill the whole universe with his spirit, according to the prophet Joel. Mm -hmm. In the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all men right. and women. Right. right. So what you said is good, mm -hmm. but that's not so what we no. Okay. 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 Right. I just wanted to get it. Right. So I think um, because we, <laughs> really, Quentin and I had talked about it before we started the Bible study, I think really the thing he wants to show is the mutability of God, that God doesn't change, and then how the New Testament points back to the Old Testament to show that the prophecies were fulfilled. And the majority of the time, so, uh, most uh, believers only like scan the New Testament. Or they haven't read enough about the Old Testament to know that the fulfillment of the prophecies that were in the Old Testament actually shows up in the New Testament, and that a lot of what Jesus was saying was fulfillment of the scriptures. And he just wants that back out. And so once you do a like a truly like an exegetical uh, study, you'll see you'll see that in the scriptures. And so this is really what what, what my brother's trying to do. And he's I call him he's a bird. Bird, <laughs> <laughs> appreciate that, man. Um, so, after Solomon built the temple, mm -hmm. and he did not forget to place the curtain with the cherubim engraved in the curtain. Mm -hmm. um, now let's go back to Abraham in Genesis 22. Abraham is going to be willing to sacrifice his son. Mm -hmm. Isaac. 
Now, he says you're one and only son, but he has two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. That's right. But Abraham is going to be willing to sacrifice his son. Promise. Hmm? I said the promise. Mm -hmm. Now, Abraham is going to load up his donkey. In verse 12, in verse uh, 2, then God said, Take your son and only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain. I will show you. Verse 3, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. Mm -hmm. He took with him two servants of the servants and his son Isaac. Now, in verse 4, on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place at a distance. So when he loads up his donkey, his son is on that donkey, mm -hmm. the firewood is on that donkey, and whatever else he placed on that donkey. Mm -hmm. Because the son is not walking that long distance, but him and the two servants is walking. So as he loaded up that donkey, he took with him his two servants and his son, Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set off for the place God told him about. On the third day, he reached the place, in verse 5, he said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will go worship and then come back. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. Mm -hmm. So one thing that Abraham, Abraham is going to do, he's willing to sacrifice his son. Two, he's loading up the donkey. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus is going to carry two beams of wood, mm -hmm. which we know as a cross, to the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what Abraham is willing to do. He's willing to sacrifice his one and only son. He's going to place the wood on his son. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he carried the fire and the knife along together. So because Abraham did this, Abraham is now, in verse 15, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, Mm -hmm. declared the Lord, mm -hmm. because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Mm -hmm. He also said, because now I know that you fear me. And you have not even withheld your only son. And that's what Abraham was willing to do. Now, when Jesus takes the wood on his shoulder, the cross, it's made out of wood. Mm -hmm. When he puts this cross on his shoulders, and then you go to M Matthew 27, 51. When Jesus gives up his spirit, mm -hmm. When his work is complete that his father sent him to do, look at what happens at that moment. Mm -hmm. So we're in Matthew 27, beginning at verse 50. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Mm -hmm. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rock split, and the tombs broke open. Mm -hmm. And the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of their tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. Mm -hmm. mm. May not sound real. <laughs> that might not sound real, but I'm just reading what it's saying. It's a yeah. The reappearance of saints. Now, Jesus is the first fruits 
of the tree of life of a restored Eden. Mm -hmm. The barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, and its purpose, according to Ephesians 2, if you got Ephesians 2, the purpose was to create one new humanity out of the two. Mm -hmm. Because of the fall in Genesis, he said, I'm going to put enmity between the offsprings, between your offspring mm -hmm. and her offspring. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to bring his son into the world through her, which was the virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. And those who are in Adam died, but those who are in Christ are made alive. So he's going to put separation between those two offsprings. But now, the tree of life, mm -hmm. the tree of life, the purpose to create one new humanity. And Jesus is the first fruits of all those, according to 1 Corinthians 15 and 20, mm -hmm. all those who have fallen asleep. That means that the holy people, all those who have fallen asleep, Trusting and believing, according to Hebrews 11, mm -hmm. the hall of faith, mm -hmm. all of those people believed, did not receive the promises while they were living, but they believed it, only saw them from a distance and welcomed them. Those holy people rose and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And appeared on to many. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus says, you read it? No, I just, I just, I just wanted to, to make the comment that 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 I myself am guilty of not having ever really truly read that specific passage. That, that I mean, I, I you gloss over it so easy to just go right past that. But to to realize that that when Christ gave up His spirit, mm -hmm. that it wasn't just Jesus who appeared to the disciples. But all these who had died in Christ, mm -hmm. holy people, were, 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 were pulled together, and, and like you're saying now, they were resurrected because of that sacrifice. They got to go into the holy city. At the point, I never really read that mm -hmm. that way. I never paid attention to it like that. Good work. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Now, John 15, 1 through 4, Jesus is going to say that his father is the gardener. Mm -hmm. Now his father is the gardener. So he made all kinds of trees in the garden. Mm -hmm. And in the center of the garden, he made a tree of knowledge of good and evil, mm -hmm. and he made a tree of life. So he could make more trees, because he's a gardener. The people went to go find Jesus in the tombs. His body wasn't there, mm -hmm. but Mary Magdalene thought he was a gardener. That's right. Now in John 15, it says, my father is a gardener, and I am a true vine. Let me go there. <laughs> yeah, come on, go. Go, brother. Because <laughs> we got a song. We got a song about that. We got a song. Chai, 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 chai. You got a song. <laughs> don't, 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 don't you see where that started, man. <laughs> I am, the, I am the vine, my father is the, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Mm -hmm. Remain in me all, uh, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Now, what we're witnessing here is a new tree. Mm -hmm. We got the Father as the gardener, and we got Jesus as the vine. Any a plant is defined as a tree, a shrub, or anything that grows can be defined as a plant. Mm -hmm. A vine. And now the disciples are the branches. Mm -hmm. And so now, if you remain connected to the source, which is the root, mm -hmm. you can receive that nourishing sap, which Paul is going to write about in Romans 11. I think mean, it's Romans 11. Mm -hmm. Where now we can be a cultivated olive tree, where now... God is going to give 
everything that we read from Moses to Abraham, he's going to give this ministry of reconciliation or this ministry of the tabernacle as the cherubim of the curtain. And now we all have access. Now that Paul is going out to the Gentiles, the Jews, now this tree, which was originally for the Jews, mm -hmm. now Gentiles can be grafted in to that tree and can share in the nourishing sap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The root is supporting you. We don't support the root. So if a Jew does not believe, he's broken off. Mm -hmm. Now it don't matter if you are Jew or Gentile. It's those who believe in the scriptures that proclaim the one who was to come. Mm -hmm. Psalms 1 reads, Psalms 1 reads, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, for his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Come on. That's good. Now, in Psalms, let me just say one more time, uh, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on this law day and night. That person mm -hmm. is like a tree mm -hmm. planted by the streams of water mm -hmm. which yields its fruit in season mm -hmm. whose, and whose leaf does not wither. These branches that we just read in, if I read further in John 15, mm -hmm. the branches can wither if they don't remain in the vine. Right. And this one says, whose leaves do not wither. That person mm -hmm. is planted by the streams of water like a tree. Mm -hmm. Jesus healed a man in the book of Mark. Mm -hmm. And he asked him, what did you see? And he said, I see people. Mm -hmm. And they look like trees. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. That's Mark, uh, which one is that? I wrote it down. Uh, but I don't have it. So, oh, Mark 8, 24. Mm -hmm. I wrote it right here. So, Jesus will become the first fruits and he will produce many seeds. A fruit is going to produce many seeds. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at John 12 and 24, this is what Jesus is going to say. Now, if you just allow me going over how this tree of life and how this seed and how it's growing mm -hmm. in all of us. Now, Jesus, this is what he's going to explain as he's predicting his death. Mm -hmm. As we already know, nobody wanted Jesus to die. His disciples wanted him to stay forever. Mm -hmm. But Jesus says, it's expedient that I go away. Right. If I don't go away, then I can't send the Comforter, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, right. so that we can all have access to the Father, the Garden. Right? So, Jesus says in 12 and 23, he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Mm -hmm. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the first fruits. When he dies and resurrects, when God raises him from the dead, mm -hmm. he is now the first fruits, and now he produces many seeds. Mm -hmm. He descended. Mm -hmm. to the lower regions of the earth. Right. And then ascended so that he can fill the whole universe with his spirit. Mm -hmm. And the prophecy is fulfilled according to the prophet Joel that in the last days I will pour out my spirit among all. That's how he fills the youth. When, he's, when the Bible says that he descended in the lower parts of the earth, is that physical earth or spiritual earth? When he said he descended in the lower parts of the earth. He descended right. to the womb of Mary. Mm -hmm. 
judge, right? Because <laughs> we are earth. That this earthly alpha, this kind of not the word of God. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, go to Psalms 139. I got to just, uh, we got to, we, we got to show what we just said. Psalms 139. So what we're going to show here is how the lower regions of the earth uh, is the mother's womb. Mm -hmm. So we all came from the lowest parts of the earth. In Psalms 139, beginning at uh, verse 13, mm -hmm. it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderful made, wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Mm -hmm. So you descended to the depths of the earth, mm -hmm. into the mother's womb. Right. That's what Jesus did. Because he's overshadowed, because the creator is going to overshadow Mary, mm -hmm. and then he, she's going to become impregnated. So he's going, the spirit is going to descend to the lower regions. He descended. Yes, sir. And then he Stayed on earth for 40 days and 40 nights teaching his disciples. And then he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the gift that my father told you that you heard me speak about. And then he's going to ascend and pour out his spirit. Now, in the book of Peter. Jesus is uh, now that spirit is in the form of a seed. Mm -hmm. Pray pure spirit to so that you may grow in your salvation. Amen. Now, that spirit is in the form of a seed. Mm -hmm. And so 1 Peter 1 and 23 mm -hmm. is going to read for It says, for you have been born again, mm -hmm. not of a perishable seed, but of an imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. Mm. The living and enduring word of God. So, like my brother Mark was saying, he said, is that what, you, is that what you're saying, that there's no need for sacrifice anymore? No, we're just trying to get that seed in us through the living and enduring word of God mm -hmm. of understanding about the cherubim. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I gave that message, my mother said, I've never seen the word cherubim in the Bible. Mm -hmm. What is that? But that was what was guarding the way back to paradise when you read Revelation. Right, right, right. right when you read Revelations uh, chapter 22, mm -hmm. Eden is going to be restored. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Then the angel showed me, I'm in verse 1, then the angel showed me the river of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are of the healing of the nations. Mm -hmm. No longer will there be any curse. You know what that curse is? Mm -hmm. Death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the throne of God and, the, and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the lamp of the, the light of the lamp mm -hmm. or the light of the sun for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. Mm -hmm. That's a different time. Right. This is forever and ever. Another right. one had forever. Mm -hmm. God puts different times in there that we don't really, we can't comprehend those times. 
because a day is a thousand years. Right. How much time we got? Now, a thousand years. <laughs> now, in first, now, in first John, we're going to go to first John, and then we're going to go to John. Mm -hmm. That was just Revelation 20 what? 22. 22 verses 1, uh, 6, I think. Okay, first John. Okay, so now we have first John 3. First John 3. And, and it's going, and right here it's going to say, this is how we know who the children of God is, and we're going to be looking for that seed. Mm -hmm. Now it says in verse 8, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Mm -hmm. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Mm -hmm. No one who was born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. Mm -hmm. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are mm -hmm. and who the children of the devil are. Mm -hmm. Anyone who does anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone mm -hmm. who does not mm -hmm. love their brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that brothers and sisters is someone that is of the same family mm -hmm. as the mm -hmm. believer. Mm -hmm. Write those scriptures down, please. Those are good verses. Mm -hmm. You know why? Why? So many times you hear people saying we all are children of God, and that is not so. This is how we At know. <laughs> <laughs> At all. Right. This it's is true. not. This is true. true. This is how There's we know. The days and the doctrines and the following mm -hmm. different doctrines that are not of God. And, okay? Mm -hmm. We are definitely in agreement there with us. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take a look at John, the first chapter. Uh, the word. A little further down, verse twelve. Now, as we as we have gone through so many different chapters and verses, and getting an understanding of the tabernacle and the temple, and what Moses was doing, Solomon was doing, what Abraham was doing, as they were waiting on the Messiah to come, to actually fulfill everything that the creator was saying he was going to do. He says, in John 1 and 12, he says, yet to all who did, excuse me, yet to all who did receive him, to all who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband will, but yeah. born of God. Everyone on the earth has the right to become a child of God if you read and study the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You have the right. right. You have the right to be grafted into a cultivated olive tree. Let's look at that scripture, but I'm going to keep talking. I think it's in Romans 11. You have the right to be grafted in. But then Paul says, don't get arrogant and think that you support the tree mm -hmm. because if God did not spare the natural branches, right. he won't spare you either. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to persist in belief instead of persisting in unbelief. Now, I know because we're all here and we're, 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 we're fellowshipping, it doesn't seem like people can persist in unbelief, but we have record of it. Mm -hmm. The Israelites came from Egypt to the wilderness and they said, let's appoint a new leader. We want to go back. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. People are always, as you're teaching scripture, they're always opposing scripture. Mm -hmm. They always oppose Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses didn't know what to do with the Israelites, so he struck the rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, any questions? Any? Uh, so, last but not least, Luke three and nine. Luke three and nine. He's going to now.
this tree that we're talking about, Jesus is going to say, I sent you to Luke 3 and 9. Yes, sir. But I'm going to read just very quickly from Matthew. I'm going to read very quickly from Matthew 15 and 13, and I come right back there. But Matthew 15 and 13, Jesus is going to say, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. We got to be sure that we are a plant, planted by the streams of water, mm -hmm. yielding fruit. And it don't matter what season it is. God is not going off of summertime, springtime, mm -hmm. because we yield in our fruit all the time. Right. Because we meditate on this word mm -hmm. day and night. Mm -hmm. They just said, oh, how I love your word. I'm meditating on it all day long. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the laws in Leviticus. It's also the Psalms. Remember, Jesus says, is it not written in your law? I have said to your gods, quoting from Psalms 82. Mm -hmm. So there are laws and decrees in the Psalms. And, and he also made a decree. He says, I made a covenant with Jacob, and Isaac, and Abraham mm -hmm. about these promises. And he made it a decree. Mm -hmm. You go to Psalms 18 or Psalms 19. It talks about the statutes and the precepts and the decrees and the commands. Mm -hmm. They're just broken down into different words. But everything that God says is law. Uh, now, we got to make sure that we are now planted by the Father and that we are branches which are disciples of the Messiah and we are connected to the source. Remain in him so that we can be pruned mm -hmm. and continue to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. Because if we persist in unbelief, you're going to wither off and be broken off mm -hmm. and then gathered and thrown into the fire. That's what it says. Now, John, I bet you had something. You ought to have something. <laughs> you know I got something. Okay. Uh, Luke, this is what John the Baptist said. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke 3 and 9. John the Baptist said, Actually, go to uh, verse 8. Actually, it's 7. John said to the crowd coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees. Mm. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Mm. So, last scripture, uh, Matthew 12 and 33. Matthew 12 and 33. And, and and for us, we don't have to say mm, about the trees that are being cut down and thrown into the fire because we are a branch that is connected and we have been planted mm -hmm. by the streams of water. Mm -hmm. We're meditating on the word. So as we are planted, our job, according to what Paul and Apollos said, mm -hmm. one plants, one waters, and let allow God to give the increase. Mm -hmm. God is the only one who can make it grow. All we can do is huddle, huddle up, go over the chapters and verses, and next time you're around somebody, rivers of living water should flow from within you. Because the seed that is planted in you should be able to produce more. Now, in Matthew 12 and 33, this is what Jesus is going to say. Make a good tree. And its fruit will be good. Or make a bad tree. And its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? Mm. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of, what, out of the good stored in him. And an evil man brings evil things 
out of the evil stored in him. Mm. Then he goes on to say, but I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. Mm. So, that tree of life that we rarely discuss mm -hmm. in the garden mm -hmm. is still here to this day right. for all of us to partake and eat from. Because Jesus is the end of the law or the culmination of the law at the height. When everyone was a sinner, he came and died. Mm -hmm. And now that cross is at the center of the universe. Right. And all you have to do is continue to read and study, and you are eating from the tree of life. Right. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Volunteer to pray us out, or anybody want to discuss anything, or, or y'all want to get to the game? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. That word, that word, you said a lot of things. That word is the seed. Okay. Okay. Uh, Anthony got something.